Video's on a snapper snowblower. Um, a horse Tecumseh engine on it, 24 inch cut. The uh, guy wants me to service it up, get it ready for him, get it going. Uh, it's been sitting for a couple years. So I'm going to go through it and check it out. Oil's nice and dark, so that needs to be changed. Um, I'm going to pull the carburetor off and clean that first. So. Find a screwdriver here. I'm not prepared, obviously. Take these couple screws out here. Get this cover off and drop your screwdriver, you know. <clears throat> Got a rag right here. I'm going to set all my stuff on that way I don't lose it. Well, I'll get this cover off and I'll come back. All right, did the undid three screws, holds that on. You got two that go through the carburetor plate here, which is loose, needs to be tightened up. Um, plus one that goes in by your dipstick tube. You want to pull your uh, choke uh, piece off here that you use to turn. Use the screwdriver, pop it off. And then uh, inside here is your kill is like a, a safety switch. You have to have this little stupid key in right here in order for the engine to run. So if you don't, then it won't run. Simple as that. Um, of course, this one's hardwired right in. Great. Um, anyways, we're just going to put that out of the way then. Out of my way. That way I can still work on it without having to unhook it really, so... But, uh, there's the carburetor. First thing you want to do is, uh, pull off your, should come off with your fingers, yep. That's your primer for up here. Pull that off. And next is your fuel line. Which, by the looks of that clamp, it's been broken. It's missing the piece there that goes onto it. It just fell off. So, we'll pull that off. Oh, and then you got your one bolt there. Another bolt on the inside and then your linkage here. Just remember where your linkage goes because there's a couple different holes you can put it in. It gets kind of confusing sometimes. But I usually take and mark it with a little paint marker right by the hole where it goes. That way you know. That way when you get fooling around with it, whatever else, you'll know. Plus, you'll see the wear marks on it anyways. But I'll come back when uh, I get that off and for some more. All right, got the two bolts out. Mark this with a little bit of paint marker right there. That way I can kind of remember. Fuel lines off, a little bit of fuel dripping out. The throttle linkage has a Z bend to it. Get underneath it here. So when you do it, you gotta push down and then pull it up and off. I don't know if I can do it here. With two hands. So hold one end with your fingers. Drop it down, bend it, and twist it and pull it right off. Simple. Um, so yeah, we'll bring this over here and gotta clean this off. Sorry for a shitty video. Um, I don't know if there's anything in the carburetor or not. I'll go over here and drain it out in my bucket. Yeah, a little bit. Not the best kind of thing in the world to have uh, be putting all my liquids in here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this carburetor definitely smells nasty, so it's definitely got some crap in it. That's for sure. So, let's see here. If I can set something up again here. Probably not. Bear with me here. Bear with me. here all right you can see that pretty good all right that'll work for now hopefully so this carburetor here this is loose right here so we're gonna see if I could try tightening that up because that shouldn't be loose anyway it's probably rattling around wore it all out that quarter inch Here. A 
full turns out of it. You don't need to take this off or anything either. Other than maybe this. There's a jet right here. You do have to take that out and clean it, but this should sit up out of the way enough to get that out without having to take this off. Matter of fact, I'm going to pull it up just to make sure. And then I'm going to tighten it down. Just to make sure everything's going to be out of the way. To not give me a headache. And then, uh, start with, uh, taking, of course, you can take these screws out here. Maybe you can get in through and clean the throat out a little bit better. Throw out a little bit better of the carburetor. Um, that helps my screwdriver. There it is. So, let's break them free. Try not to strip them out. If you do, you can get new ones, but just easier not to strip them out because it's not that hard to do. I like to take this off of the way. Just careful how this, because this will come out and fall out on you, and then you'll lose it or whatever. So try to keep it, you know, stationary without moving around too much. It's not that hard to put back together, but just that way you don't lose stuff. You can see all the gunk on this thing is just nasty. So next, I'm going to pull the. This is your main screw right here, plus your your jet is right here, and this is uh, also holds your bowl on. Now the Tecumseh videos, I said in that one other video, they have a special bowl that go on them. They have to go on back on a certain way. It's because of the float travels through here. And this is where your pin would go in for your float, is on the flat part. So you need this extra bowl space here to allow that float to travel. I'm hoping that's not a rot hole, I want to call it. Because these uh, aluminum bowls here are known to the gas will eat right through them it's just amazing what crap is in the gas makes you wonder why you touch it with your bare hands you know <laughs> but uh let's see if i can pull this off here 716s i believe yep break that free nice gunk holding it in place it's on there pretty tight and then it's gonna fight me all the way off because it's got a lot of nasty gunkus in it this spring here is a drain out gas in the bottom. Say if you have a little bit of water in there, you can just hit this and just drain out a little bit of gas out if you did have a little bit of water in it. Kind of a quick and quick way to fix it. Yeah, look at that thing. I think it looks like it had some water in it at one point in time. Jet's not very too looking for this main one here. It's not looking too hot. So I'll set that aside here. We'll pull this off the rest of the way that we can look in here. Inside here, it's got some nice film of crap inside the bowl. So that definitely needs to be cleaned. You could do all this without having to buy new gaskets. If you do it you know, nice and easy like, you can pull this off without stretching out the bowl gasket and ruining it. Float pin should fall right out. Do that. And then check that out. It's got a little wear spots here where it's been rubbing, you know, but that's natural so pull the float off this is a copper float and it does have solder spots on it so what i always like to do is put these up to my ear and shake it and you can hear if it's got gas in it if it's got gas in it then it's going to be heavy it's going to sink and then you're going to have your needle valve be stuck open so then therefore it's going to cause it to flood and then you're going to fill your crankcase with gas it's just a nasty thing so I always take these and put them up next to my ear and shake them. And I don't hear anything in this one, so I think this one's sealed up nice and tight. But we will go through, go around and clean it up a little bit. Let's check out this needle valve. Needle valve, these Tecumsehs always have a steel needle valve. And then down inside is a, is a uh, rubber O-ring, which I call an O-ring, but a uh, rubber, rubber needle seat. And uh, now the needle seat, what the hell is going on here? Hang on a second, I'll look at this here. 
Looks like somebody took a drill bit to the needle seat or needle where the needle goes. I don't doubt it. <laughs> um. Anywho, you can reach in there and push that uh, main jet out that, that's in there, the main nozzle that's right there. I don't know if you can see it down in there, the brass. You can push that out through. It should come out through the bottom because I need to because there's some gunk up in there. So, but uh, this needle valve seat, the needle seat that's in here, that's down in there. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe not. Anywho, that's down in there. Don't spray that with carb cleaner because that will shrink right up. And if it does, then that's when you need to start go buy a gasket kit for it and everything else you could buy just the seat and the needle but just to save the headache try not to spray it just make sure it's clean with a little bit of air from your mouth just blow through it and if you can see down through there no issues then you're good so we're going to spray this up here okay, clean. shake it around a little bit shouldn't dump it out on my floor but i'm going to Nice clean rag here. But I just wipe this out, you know, clean this up. And then you want to take this apart if you want to. Um, so that you remember how much, how much, which way it was. Screw this in all the way to where it bottoms out. But as you screw it in, count how many flat spots you turn it. So that way when you put it back together, you can start all the way in and turn it back out the same amount of turns. That way, because this needs to be set in a specific area. So you could do that to start with when you put the carburetor back together. But then when it starts running, you might have to adjust it in or out one or the other to get it to run smoothly. But uh, I'll clean up these few pieces here and I'll come back. That way it's not a very long video. So I'm back here real quick. I can see this. Um, like I said, you can push that center jet out. Or a nozzle, you want to call it. Open that up, now we can see in there. Um, it's right there. You just reach in with a flat blade screwdriver and push down on it. It should pop out. That way you can get in there and clean it. I mean, sometimes they come out, sometimes they don't. But uh, if you can't, I mean, because it would be better to clean in there. So if you can, if you can't, no big deal. But if you can, it would be better. Try it here. If this doesn't do it, then I'm just gonna say screw it. And... But... Jesus, what the hell's going on with this thing? What the frig is going on with this? Choke is all kind of screwy. That's weird. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Ain't half bad. Well, I figured I'd try getting that out for you, but I can't. So we're just going to skip it. So I'll be back. All right, back with some more here. Um, got it all cleaned out best I can. What I can do, you know, what you're gonna be able to do unless you can do a better job, you know, whatever. But uh, I just go through and clean up every port and orifice I can. I just make sure everything's. I could blow fluid through everything with the with the carb cleaner, you know. And if you can, then you're good. Everything should be cleaned out. You know, and then I got a little piece of uh, wire here that I like to use from a wire brush. You can also use that to run down through every little port that you can find. That's just as an added extra. Make sure there's no nothing clogging stuff. You know, I would. And then, uh, so yeah, it's it's not too tedious. Just gotta remember where everything goes back together and got this all cleaned up. Um, 
don't know if I can see the numbers on this carburetor. Clean, I did clean the carburetor up too a little bit because it was nastified. This is a 1432F4P carburetor, uh, Tecumseh brand, and it's got the number 37 stamped on this side. So, yeah, I believe it's the 37. Yeah, casting number. So, um, yeah, very much to them. I'll just, I'll show you. How to reassemble it real quick. Make sure you line the bowl up. Make sure I got everything here. Oh, shit. I forgot to take this jet out. Like I said. By the way. So you can set the screws there. You know, it ain't gonna hurt nothing. This is your uh, idle jet here. Or idle screw, whatever you want to call it. Take out jack and this has got a little bit of stuff on. Nothing much. That ain't bad. I blew through there, so I wasn't too horrible. Went through again. Yeah. Yep, that's not horrible. Nice and clean, actually. Nice. If you get that surging when it's when it's idling, and you get that surging of the engine where it's rum rum, I usually if you, you usually should be able to adjust this one if it, the carburetor cleaned right. Should be able to adjust this one, and it should, uh, and it should be able to uh, fix that problem. I just turn it in, and turn it out a couple turns until it stops. This is all freed up. When you spray this, spray down on the inside of here where the shaft goes down into, um, gets gunked up with gas, and then the thing won't move. It'll be hard to turn. So just spray in there with carb cleaner. It'll clean it out, and then it'll free right up. So let me get this thing slapped back together here. Show you. Hook the. Uh, I hook the. Uh, I can't talk. I hook the needle onto the float like so. Makes it easier for me. You may have a different way. Stick it down into the. Uh, where it goes down onto the needle seat. And stick your float pin in. Come on, get in there. There you go. You want to center the float pin up best you can. We're gonna check the uh, check the level on here. It looks pretty level. It's not bad. Comes up. So that ain't too bad. And then uh, I'll put this gasket back on here real quick. So, that's how to clean this carburetor. And then, like I was saying, oh, of course, I put this to put the uh, gasket back on for the uh, bowl. What you do, like I was saying about this, uh, the bowl here has to go on a certain way. If you can see this, you can see what's going on here. This is the flat spot right here. And then, you can't see it, but right here is the, the float pin. It needs to line up here so that way like I said this travels in here into the deepest part of the bowl so you want to get that as straight as you can by eye you know best you can doesn't have to be pitch perfect but and then uh, go ahead and slap this back and then the jet back the main jet and pack in the bottom tighten it down I got some more snow blowers I'm gonna be working on so I'm oh, shut up a bitch I knew that was gonna happen boy you didn't put any pressure on that goddamn thing and it broke. You gotta be shitting me. I didn't even get that thing tight. Well, good thing I did that now and versus it breaking on the guy. Look at that thing. You can see where it was barely held on by that little bit right there. Like somebody else broke it before me. Or stressed it anyways. I didn't even get no pressure on that darn thing. Jesus. Well, I guess I gotta get a jet for that then. Well, I think I'm pretty sure I got a spare one down at the garage I'll have to get. Oh well. Shit happens. So, you can see here and here. This piece is supposed to go on here. You can see where it broke. There's nothing holding it on this side. Just that one little bit on this side where it's nice and shiny. Nothing really shiny on this side. 
So it tells you that it was already partially broke. Of course, you can't really see it when it's the threads, you know. It's right there's the threads and boop. So, oh well, I'll have to bring that with me down to the garage and look for look for stuff. So, but that's all on that carburetor, and I'll fix this and get it back running. I'll come back with a video on hopefully it running. If not, whatever. But I'll just show you how to clean a carburetor the cheap way without having to buy gaskets and this and that and having to bring it to somebody. So. And there you go.